Hey, 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 everybody. Come on in. Welcome to the Word Uncensored with Sister Shay. And this is Sister Shay to correspond. And, ooh, that's loud. I like my music loud. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Word Uncensored with Sister Shay. And I am Sister Shay. Yes, sing the song, Shirley Caesar. Feed me till I want no more. Come on, somebody. Come on, I'm just giving y'all a chance to get in. Hello, 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 everybody. Yes, yes, yes. It's been a while since we've done. I'm... Yes. Hello, hello, Sister Wileen. <laughs> hey, darling. How are you, darling? So, it's been a while since we've done uh, a word on Sister with Sister Shay. I um, let you all know that I was going on a little bit of a hiatus because of, um, because of obligations that I have right now and me needing to focus. And so, um, I've, my, my ministry responsibilities have changed elsewhere as well. Um, but I'm getting into the hang of things and every now and then, this is not going to be an every Thursday thing right now, uh, but I got time today. Hallelujah! I got time today, okay? And I feel something. Now, I was planning on going live today anyway. Uh, hey, Zantika. Hey, Sister Deborah. Hey, Terry Kendall. I was planning on going live today anyway to discuss what I'm going to discuss but since certain people want to come and try to argue with me about what I put on my page, it's going to go a little different. It's going to go a little different. But today, all right, Shirley. She said, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. The top, Hey, Prophet Dedrick, how are you? Hey, Tina Evans. Um, uh, <laughs> so I planned on talking about this, as I said yesterday, while I was at work. I just was like... I hate when God does that to you when you're at work and he started talking to you. And I was falling all over my desk, honey, just boo-hoo crying at my desk. And I was like, Lord, I hope I don't nobody walk past and see me. But I was, you know, going through a little something. And so I want to talk to you today about this subject. But let's go ahead and get started. And if you don't mind sharing, I have tagged some people. Then you go ahead and share it. And if you don't, then that's fine. But as I'm trying to pull all this stuff up, let me just say um, very quickly that I have been very, very, very um, trying to be, attempting to be as non-controversial as I, as I can, uh, given my personality, uh, because, of, because of the business. You understand that I'm in. And so when you're in that type of business, which is why in the beginning I was like, this might not be for me. Uh, you know, so I've really been quiet on topics that I normally am very, very vocal about. And uh, that's over. Okay. Hashtag Shay Home now. I'm done doing that. Because you, you've got to understand that your assignment is not everybody else's assignment. So when you don't do certain things, when you don't address certain issues, when you don't say and speak out on certain topics... You're not, they're not going to get in trouble because that's not their topic. That's not their assignment. Okay. But when you are a prophet and, 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 and are called to speak to confrontational or controversial issues and you don't do that. Okay. Well, anyway, hashtag Shay home now. Okay. I'm done being quiet. I feel like I'm about to bust. I feel like I'm wrapped up in ties and cords. And if you don't want to spend $5 with me, then keep your $5 in your pocket and you can delete me off this page. I'm tired of that. Shay home now. All right. So, um, the other night I was having a conversation and, um, all right, Sharon. <laughs> so I was having a conversation and I said to the person, I need to get back to my routine. But before I do that, let me address this Halloween issue. Like I said, I'm going to address it. I'm going to talk about it all through the, I'm going to talk about it all through the, through the sermon. I wasn't even going to do this today. Like I really wasn't. I was just going to post one post, you know, and just leave it alone. But, uh, don't check me on my page. Okay. I, I, I write what I want to write on my page. I don't bother nobody about what they post on their page. 
If you post something that I don't like, I just uh either keep it moving, okay, scroll past it, take you out my news feed and unfollow you, or I delete you, okay? But one thing you're not going to do, you're not going to check me about what I post on my page, okay? So, and I don't care who you are. Don't do that, all right? So, anyways, uh, I do, thank you, Darlene. I do uh, feel very strongly about certain things. Uh, one of the things that I feel very strongly about is um, is pol police brutality, anything having to do with injustice, okay? Whether it's racial injustice, whether it's gender inequality, uh, bullying people, I hate bullies, uh, Any anything that causes another individual uh, pain and consternation and all of that good stuff like that right there. I can't stand that. And I've been very quiet. Like, I haven't really said a whole lot about y'all little cheetah president. You know, I've been quiet on politics for the most part. That's over too, okay? Uh, <laughs> so, and the other thing that I feel very strongly about is the celebration of Halloween by Christians. Now, if you are not a Christian, you're non-Christian, or if you're a little carnal Christian, then I understand why you're frustrated. My, the, the post that I put up, really, I'm not targeting any, any individual person. The, the people who I'm really targeting are these, uh, these ministers who act like, you know, let me just say this, that if you talk about you represent God, this is what celebrating Halloween is tantamount to. A Christian celebrating Halloween is tantamount to a husband taking his wife to his mistress' birthday party. Who in the hell does that? Okay? Uh, that's crazy to me. But do what you do. I'm just saying. I post what I want to post. You do what you want to do. That is something that I honestly feel very strongly about. And if you disagree, disagree on your page. Okay? Because I probably already took out my news feed anyway. Hallelujah. So we'll talk about it some more. All right. So I was having a conversation the other night and, um, and I say, oh, oh, and let me just say one more thing before I go into this, to this, uh, I'm going to post a, a, um, a Facebook live that I did. Um, thank you, sister Darlene that I did. All right, Miss Wally, you know, I'm gonna cry loud. Uh, a Facebook live that I did two years ago, I believe on the subject and it will explain um, your post, you can post what you want. Exactly. That will explain. <sighs> Let me just say this. I'm not saying that you can't have fun. Anybody who knows, Hey Donda, anybody who knows me knows. I'm, I think that I am one of the most liberal Christians, liberal prophets. Like I, I don't think you got to walk around and thick stockings and doilies on your head and you can't laugh. You can't tell a joke. You can't listen to secular music. I, I, I do believe that you, you can have freedom in Christendom. But freedom does not mean that you fit in with everything else that everybody else is doing. So anyway, I'm going to post that video. And you will under, if, if after you see that, you still feel the same way, then that's your business. But I just need, I'm just going to post it so you will know why I have such a uh, uh, you know, strong opinion about the celebration of Halloween. It's not a good day. Okay. It ain't nothing to celebrate. There are children who are going, who are missing. Some of y'all crying and posting about the little girls and, and the little babies that they, bodies that they have found. That has happened all month long. Okay. All of it ain't even going to make the news. Children have been sacrificed this month. Will be sacrificed today. Okay. All week long because of this day. There's nothing great or holy about it. It's nothing, it's not cute, it ain't fun, it ain't innocent, and don't tell me that black lives matter if you think that this is okay, okay? Woo, child, I just got all off in my flesh. Let's come on back, Sister Shay. All right, so the other night I was having um, uh, a conversation with, 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 um, with Mr. And so what I said was, I said, it's time for me to really, um, to really, um, get back into the swing of my full prayer life into the swing of my full prayer life. And, um, and, 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 and so I said, um, who father God, um, and he, he asked me why. And I said, well, you know, everybody need to do that. And he was like, but why do you need to do it? And I said, well, there is a season that I'm coming upon that I need to prepare for. 
and the season is not ministry per se. Uh, it is where I know my next assignment is. And so whenever, if you are kingdom minded, uh, then you understand that um, your impact in the world is greater than your preaching. It is greater than um, your sermons. It is greater than you being a prophet. But everywhere you go, you need to consecrate. Uh, if you are a, a doctor, if you are a lawyer, if you are an Indian chief, if you are a waitress, a sanitation worker, uh, if you are a uh, the head of anything, if you are a manager in an organization and you are a Christian, you are a representative of Christ and you have an assignment that must be carried out. And in order to be effective in your assignment, there has to be a level of consecration. OK, so so many Christians think that con consecration is only for the clergy. Only for those who preach. No, consecration is for every Christian. It is for the average Christian who say that, that God lives on the inside of them. There is a level that you ought to go and represent Christ everywhere you go. So I got to prepare for the season. But, but honestly, it was the season that I'm going into and some things that God showed me that, uh, that I was going to have to deal with. But I'm going to get to that in a minute. So, so, so. So uh, everything requires a level of consecration. And, um, and so what is consecration? Consecration is being dedicated for a sacred purpose. Dedication for a sacred purpose. And for the purposes of this talk, when I say consecration, I'm talking about coming away. Okay, for times of prayer, fasting, and studying the word. That's what I'm talking about. And so uh, uh, the subject today is, all right, let's go on and go to the text. I'm going to be coming from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, and I'm reading from my favorite translation, which is the King James Version. And 1 Kings 19 and 1, and it reads, And Ahab told Jezebel, how fitting that we're talking about Jezebel on Halloween. Uh -huh. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Now, this is the chapter right after the chapter, after um, Elijah had slain all the prophets of Baal. You know, when he said, you know, the God that answered by fire, then let that person be God. And, you know, they, they, they did all this chanting and cutting themselves and praying all day. And Elijah was picking at him saying, call him a little louder. Maybe he's asleep. And so, you know what he did, uh, that, that the God didn't, uh, their God didn't answer by fire, but the God that we serve, he answered, oh my God, he answered by fire. Amen. And so, and so after that, he killed all the prophets of Baal. Listen here, Christianity ain't cute. Okay. It ain't convenient and it's not comfortable. When you come over and decide that you're going to be, and this is what Elijah said. He said, now who on the Lord's side? Tell me now. And if you're going to be on God's side, that there are some things that you have to walk away from. There are certain things that you have to shun. There are certain things that you have to, to say, I'm not going to be involved with this. Whose side are you on? And so when, when God answered by fire, he killed the prophets of Baal. And how many of us are allowing the prophets of Baal to stay alive in our lives? Okay, we're still, okay, I ain't got, all right. So anyway, so then after he killed the prophets of Baal, Jezebel's prophets, because see, every prophet ain't a prophet of God. Then Jezebel sent Elijah a message, tried to scare him, tried to intimidate him, tried to get him to be quiet, tried to throw his faults up in his face so he dared not to speak in the name of the Lord. Oh, uh, but Elijah said, I ain't never scared. And you ain't going to never get me to stop talking about what God has given me to talk about. This is my mouth. I will proclaim that which the Lord has told me to proclaim. And so then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. In other words, she threatened uh, 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 Elisha. She, she tried to intimidate him. Uh-huh. Don't threaten me. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't run from a fight. Okay. Jesus. All right. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. He was tired. He, and then he said for himself that he might die. He said, it is enough now, O Lord, mm -hmm. take my life, for I am not better than my father's. 
Every prophet will deal with the spirit of suicide and depression. Okay, I'm going to deal with it a little bit more later, but I just want to stop right there and say, listen, if you, that's why I don't really understand, I, I mean, I do understand it, but I don't understand why people want uh, or covet the office of the prophet. Ain't nothing glamorous about this, okay? Long before, the real prophets are not, uh, you know, prophesying for houses and cars, okay? And, 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 yeah. I don't like this, all right, the devil, uh, um, real prophets are not concerned about houses and cars. This is warfare over here. And so when you have a prophetic anointing on your life, or if you're called to do anything great, you will deal with the spirit of suicide. You know why? Because prophets attract Jezebels. Oh, gee. If you are a prophet, a real prophet, particularly if you are one of the power prophets or the confrontational prophets, all your life, the spirit of Jezebel has been after you. And Jezebel will wear you out. See, he had just... He had just come off of one of the greatest victories in his ministry. And as soon as he comes off the victory, here comes Jezebel again. And so now he said, God, I'm tired of the warfare that I'm, oh Jesus, I'm tired of the warfare. And so I told somebody one time, I said, I'm so sick of these witches bothering me. And she said, well, you might well go somewhere and get some rest because that's what you're going to have to deal with your whole life because of who you are. You, every, I, I was saying the other day, I went into what the, the first time that I went back to Tallahassee, I could feel them territorial demons stand up and say, the hell is here. She here now. And then when I felt the demonic presence in that city stand up against me, I felt the angelic host surrounding me saying, but we got you, baby. We got you. You good. Don't worry about it. Okay. When you are a, when you are a certain type of prophet, you will always deal with the spirit of suicide and depression, let's see, let's see, but let's see. All right, okay, here we go. So so he says, he went and sat up under the juniper tree and, and an angel touched him. Uh-huh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Let me go back to verse four. I'm reading from 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. Yes, Tracy, constant warfare. Yes, Waleen, this means war. Uh, thank you for covering me, Terry. Okay, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He took a journey into the wilderness. There's a time that you have to come away from the crowd. Okay. There's a time that you have to say, listen, I've been through some stuff. Let me read. Let me, let me collect myself. Okay. I, I just came out of divorce. It ain't time for me to date right now. Okay. I just came out of a, a, a financial hardship and I can't go buy no big house. I might just need to just stay in this one bedroom apartment. I got to come away for a while and regroup. Okay. So he says he takes a one day's journey uh, into the wilderness. The wilderness is a place of dying. The wilderness is a place where nothing can grow. The wilderness is a place where you can't build anything. But in this life, I hear John P. Key, in this life, everybody shall have a wilderness experience. And if you don't have a wilderness experience, it's because you ain't got nothing going on. But anyway, so he goes into the wilderness and he came and sat under a juniper tree and he requested that he might die. And, and verse five, and as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. I want to speak to you today from the subject. Oh God, let's eat. <laughs> oh Jesus, I feel this. Verse six, and he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink. And then he lay down again. Uh-huh. And verse seven, and the angel of the Lord came again the second time because you got to eat some more. It ain't enough to just do it one time because for what you have to do, Florida State is having a wilderness spirit. Uh, listen here, uh, Superintendent Carl Anderson, I'm trying to stay under the anointing today and hallelujah. Don't start with me. <laughs> so, and he arose and did eat and drink and went into the strength of that meat. No, let me go back to verse seven. Yeah. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. Yes. But what you have to do, the assignment that is on your life, the purpose that is on your life, you can't just pray and fast just a little bit. Uh-huh. You, you, you got to go back and do this again. You got to eat and then rest. You got to eat and then pray. You got to eat and then worship. You got to eat and then rest some more. Okay. The journey, the, the, the calling that is on your life, you can't do it like everybody else do it. Okay. So anyway, so, so verse eight. 
8. And so he got up again and he arose and did eat and drink. And he went in the strength of that meat, of that meat, in the strength of that meat, 40 days. I'm going to talk about meat in a minute. Meat is important. Meat is important. Uh huh. He went in the strength, not milk, not bread. He went in the strength of that meat, uh huh, 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. He went on the journey in the strength of the meat. Again, I want to speak to you today from the subject, let's eat. Let's eat. So as I said, I was having this conversation. And so I know that because of, of the journey that I am on, that God has put me on in this season in my life, that I have to come away. Uh, I have to steal away. Hey, Karen Boston, how are you, darling? I have to, uh, uh, I, I have to prepare. I have to eat the word of God. I have to bask in his presence. I have to spend some alone time with God. And so, um, um, there's something about eating the word, something about this. I started off with the song that Shirley, she, Caesar was saying bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. Oh my God. Oh my God, feed me until I want Jesus. Feed me with the Okay, and so there's something about this bread that uh, the more you eat, the hungrier you become. It's something about this water that the more you drink, the thirstier you become. Uh, this, uh, David says it like this, as the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. And so I need you. I want you. I've got to have you. I am nothing without you, and I can do nothing without you. I am hungry for you, God. And there's a difference between hunger and craving. Can I talk about that for a minute? Uh, there's a difference between hunger and craving because when you are hungry, almost anything will satisfy you. But if you have a craving, only, only the thing that you're craving will satisfy you. Let me tell you how I know. First of all, because I'm greedy. Praise the Lord. And so if I'm hungry, uh, then, then I can eat almost anything and be happy. But if I'm having a craving for something, I can eat all day, every day, and still won't turn it off. So, so you know, I've done this, you know, because I'm on a constant diet. Praise the Lord. And so I went on this little, this little diet where I could only eat uh, fruits and vegetables. You know, that diet that's of the devil. Amen. And so I was eating all the salad. And sure, on, on this diet, you can eat all the salad. That's why I went on it. Oh, it's an all-you-can-eat diet? Well, praise the Lord. So I... <laughs> I'm eating all this salad all day, every day, but I still was not satisfied because you got to understand me now. If I don't have something sweet after I eat, I don't feel like I ate nothing. I don't care what I ate. I don't care if I had barbecue chicken, ribs. Okay. This salad ain't doing nothing for me. Praise the Lord. So let me tell you, now this is crazy. This is what I really realized that I'm a carb addict. So on about the second day of that diet, <laughs> After I ate all that salad, child, let me tell you something. And I ain't trying to be nasty. Salad cleans you out, okay? So I was going to the bathroom a lot. But on about the second day of that diet, I said, I feel like I'm about to die. So I went in the freezer, and I just had two little tablespoons, okay, of chocolate ice cream. And immediately, <laughs> I, was, I, didn't, I, was, I felt satisfied. You know why? Because it didn't matter what I was eating. My body wanted something sweet. So it wasn't just that I was hungry. Okay. I was craving. My body said, okay, what is you doing? We want something sweet. And until I gave my body something sweet, that hunger pain did not go off. I was miserable for two days. This is what, why we have to crave the things of God. And many of us are trying to satisfy our appetites with things that are not fulfilling us. That's why you can't sleep with people enough. You can't have enough sex to feel that longing in you. You can't have enough boyfriends to feel that longing in you. You can't make enough money to feel the void that's in your life. You can't have enough friends to be happy and satisfied. Your soul craves for the one true and living God. Oh my God. I, okay, I ain't trying to go there yet. I ain't trying to preach yet. Let me, let me just keep going. And so the reason that some are not hungry, however, the reason that some of us are not hungry for God is because we're full of everything else. Okay, we're full of relationships, and that's why he can't trust you with no man. That's why you ain't got no man. That's why you ain't going to get no man, because God knows as soon as you get a man, you're going to forget that he exists on the planet, and he don't want you to get full off of, okay, all right, uh, some of us are filled with our careers. We think that because, uh, you know, of our education level or what we've achieved.
received on the job and, and all this other kind of stuff. We try to get full off the careers, material things. Some of us are so full of ourselves because of what God has blessed us with. Okay. And so even ministry, even ministry, we can think that we're somebody in the kingdom because of the title we got. Well, I'm apostle, you know, such and much, you uh, know, I'm prophetess, you know, uh, can't prophesy my way out of a paper bag. But your title makes you feel satisfied. Even though with that title, you ain't got no power. What good is it for you to be an apostle with five people in your church and three of them is your one of them out and three of them is your family? Your mama, your wife, and your daughter. <laughs> Jesus. So anyway, so he'll snatch that stuff away. All that stuff that you're so full of. All that stuff that you that makes you not be hungry for him, he'll snatch all that stuff away because he wants you hungry. If, if you're satisfied over this, then you won't go after that, okay? And, and you won't pursue your purpose, and, and he's stoking your appetite because he wants you to long for him. He wants you to seek his face. He wants you to say, God, what must I do to, oh, Jesus, to be saved? And so your destiny, let me slow down, let me slow down, your destiny determines your diet, your destiny. What do I mean? If you've been called to international worldwide ministry, you not go win the world praying on your way to work. Hello. Okay. You, you're not going to win the world. If the only scripture, you know, can quote straight all the way accurately is first John three sixteen. Okay. <laughs> so, you can't be a devil slaying, witchcraft destroying, spiritual warrior praying five minutes a day. Now, I know that the faith, the word of faith people tell you it don't matter how long you pray. That's a lie. Okay. You got to spend some time in his presence. If Jesus had to pray for 40 days and 40 nights and he was God in the flesh. Okay. Who are you to think that you can pray for two minutes every day if that. And think you got some power. The devil ain't scared of you. You ain't ain't man demon trembling when you walk in a room. <laughs> okay. So, that, but, but watch this. Now, remember, we talked about consecration. Consecration is dedicating yourself for a sacred purpose. And everyone is responsible for a level of consecration. Not just the clergy. Okay, the, the preachers are not the only one that need to be consecrated. You need to be consecrated every day of your life. And so, and, and, and just let me say, this, the devil does not attack you at the level of your consecration. What, what do I mean? If you only pray five times a day, I mean five minutes a day, and you never fast and you don't study the word, you just read it. There's a difference between reading the word and studying the word. Okay, because you can, you can read the word and quote scriptures all out of context. Don't make no sense. Messing people up. You, you, you a mess. The people who following you a mess because you ain't spent no time in the word rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay. Yes, I said that. All right. So, 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 so if you don't spend any time in prayer, fasting. Oh, I know fasting is a cuss word in the body of Christ. Yes. And, and don't study the word to properly exegete this word. Mm -hmm. The devil does not attack you at the level of your understanding. No, no, no. He does not attack you at the level of your consecration. He attacks you at the level of your calling. What do you mean? If your consecration is a level two, but your calling is on level 10, then you're going to get a level 10 attack. Okay, so he's not going to say, well, you know what? I know they called to this greatness. I know they called to touch millions. I know they're called to men win, to, to win many souls and, and to save many people from destruction. But, but he's still strung out on drugs. And, and, and he ain't even all the way in God yet. And, and she ain't sold out yet. So I'm just going to attack her a little bit. No, he attacks you for where you're called to. Not where you are. So if you are experiencing hell on every side. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Then that means that it's not something wrong with you. That you don't have an issue. You just, your consecration has not caught up to your calling. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So you won't get a level 10 attack. And many of you are suicidal and depressed and socially dysfunctional and hoodwinked and bamboozled and run amok because the level of your attack is greater than the level of your consecration. And so the devil spends more time studying you than you spend studying the word of God. 
The devil spends more time picking on you than you spend praying. So if you are being attacked every day of your life from your childhood, it's not because you're nothing and nobody. It's because you're carrying something on the inside and, and you are somebody that hell has taken notice of. The devil has more respect for your calling than you do. Oh, Jesus. And he's prophesying that there is greatness in you that he wants to destroy. Oh, so, so that long head, slew fitted lizard devil, I, I promise you I can't stand the devil. I declare he's a crocodile. He's a, he's a University of Florida Gator. I can't stand him. He don't fight fair. He don't wait until you have fulfilled your purpose, okay? He don't even, he don't even wait until you, oper uh, until you started operating in the purpose. He's, he comes before you even know what your purpose is. Okay, he, he, he starts attacking you when you're four and five and six and seven. When you're a little girl and a, and a man who you should be able to trust creeps into your room at night and touches you in places that you have no business being touched. Oh my God, he, he, he attacks you when you are a little boy and you feel abandoned and rejected by a man and you don't understand what manhood is. And so all your life you're seeking uh, how to be a man, how to be loved properly by a man, how to, how to love a woman properly. He don't wait until you get some strength to fight him, that old nasty buzzard. He's a dirty devil, honey. He attacks you before you ever get a chance, oh Jesus, to walk in your purpose. So he's a prophet. The devil, the devil is a prophet. He's a prophet. What is he prophesying? He's prophesying the level of your greatness. He's telling you that the reason I'm attacking you is because there's something in you that I'm afraid of and I don't ever want you to learn how to walk in it. Oh, I'm preaching, honey. I'm preaching, honey. Listen, my cash app is dollar sign sister Shay. Go on and send me an offering, honey, because I that's all right. You ain't got to. I send my own I I I put up my own offer. Hey, Amen. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I'm preaching real good today. And so again, <laughs> your destiny determines your diet. Uh-huh. So your destiny determines if you have a diet of bread, milk, or meat. All right. Milk, bread, meat. Milk, bread, meat. Milk is the sincere word of God. It's what baby Christians feed off of. You know, you know the Christians who still celebrate Halloween. Yeah, I said that. But you can't fight no territorial demons on milk. Okay? The most you can do on milk is just stay saved. All right? You can't walk in destiny on milk. All right. You can't fulfill your purpose on milk. Milk will only help you stay alive. But when you want to start, <laughs> when you want to start operating purpose, you at least got to graduate to bread. Now, what is bread? Bread is what the gifted, with the gifted people with no power. That's what they eat. <laughs> they know, they know a few scriptures. They don't know how to quote them right. They don't know how to use them in context, but they gifted and they know how to operate in their gifts but they still ain't got no real power, okay? Because if they had power, you know, uh, anyway. And they still celebrate Halloween too, all right? And so then, but meat, meat. Remember that Elijah went in the strength of that meat for 40 days. Yes, he did. And so meat is for full-grown women and men who have come over into maturity in God. And now they can handle meat is the revelation of God's word. Oh, Jesus. Meat causes you to see what, you, what the average, what the natural eye cannot see. Oh, uh, it's what separates the men from the boys. Oh, in this thing that we call Christendom. Yes, yes. So you can't do what everybody else is doing. And you can't go where everybody else is going. And you can't wear what everybody else is wearing. And you can't date like other people. I spent my entire childhood trying to fit in. And now I don't care. You don't have to like me. You don't have to love me. You ain't even got to follow me. I done told y'all one time before, my ministry is not for everybody. I'm not trying to have thousands of followers, okay? I know I'm not called to that. I'm called to the people who are trying to get to the meat and only the mature can handle meat. Okay. Only the immature are arguing with me about whether or not a Christian should be celebrating Halloween. Okay. Cause the spiritual and mature understand that you can't love God and celebrate his enemy. Okay. But anyway, but you do you boo. Do you do what you do? Do what you do boo. Do it. All right. So anyway, I spent my whole childhood trying to fit in and I came to the realization in my adulthood 
that everybody ain't going to like me, even though my mama always told me that. She's like, you ain't going to never have a lot of friends. You ain't going to never fit in. Okay. But I still wanted to because people by nature want relationships. They want to be liked. They want to be loved. They want to be applauded. And I'm not any different from anybody else. I would love for people to love me. I would love for people to just, just, you know, what, but hey, that ain't my calling. All right. Anyway, I ain't got time to deal with that. So I'm talking about fitting in because you've got to understand that based on your destiny, your diet will be different from other people's diets. So you can't have a diet of carnality and foolishness and all this other stuff and expect to be to, to walk in your destiny. And, 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 and your destiny also determines who you eat with, not just let's eat. OK, uh, but who am I going to eat with? Because, see, I, every armor bearer that I've had, and, and, and thus far, I've only had one that has lasted for any significant amount of time. Because I always tell them up front, listen, now you say you want to be my armor bearer. The Lord tell me, <laughs> the Lord tell me that I'm supposed to be your armor bearer. For real? He said that? Okay. Well, listen, boo, let me just say this to you. All right. Uh, I'm not one of them prophets that get called to, to run Revival so I can raise money because I'm not even a good fundraiser. And in fact, I had I had to get somebody straight and invited me to their church to preach and then gonna call me afterwards talking about they expected me to raise the offering and give an offering too. So you mean I, I got to pay to preach? I raised you a good offering. You mad because I so you, did you invite me over here? <laughs> Cause you thought I was gonna sow a five hundred dollars into your offering? That I could have stayed home and done that. I didn't have to come preach to pay you. Okay, so, and I told him, I said, listen, let me tell you something. I said, if you wanted somebody to raise some money, then you should have got on Google and searched for fundraiser. And I promise you that my name would have never came up in that search. I'm not a fundraiser. Okay, I spoke a word and you just dug that word up with your foolishness. Don't invite me to preach if you want me to raise an offering. Okay, if you want to, if you want a word, call me. All right. If you want a fundraiser, call Creflo Dollar. <laughs> I'm just playing Creflo. You know I love you, boy. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so so anyway, who your destiny doesn't just determine your diet, but it also determines who you eat with. And so what I and so what I've said to the, my armor bears is the people that say they want to be my armor bear. Uh, the Lord say the Lord say you supposed to be my. I'm supposed to be your armor bear. Okay. Just understand. All right. And don't none of them last. Okay, because because see, when you become somebody's armor bearer, you get hit with what's what's with what's targeting them. And, and I had one girl tell me, she said, I ain't never had so much warfare in my life. Okay, I told you that. So if you're not willing, if your diet is not like my diet, if you don't eat like I eat, then you can't fight what I fight. So you can't walk with me. Okay, if you want to walk with me, your your the level of your 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 consecration has to match mine. Okay, your prayer life, your love for God, your 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 commitment to the things of God has to match mine. Because if it doesn't, listen, some of y'all are in relationships that you need to end because you're gonna get somebody killed fooling with you. Okay, because they just here to have fun. But the destiny that's on your life, the purpose that is on your life is going to get them beat across the head if you don't just be honest and say, look here, girl, I love you, but you don't want what I want. And you ain't called to what I'm called to. And I love you too much to subject you to the warfare that you're going to go through trying to fool with me if you're not ready to come to the level. All right. <laughs> Some of y'all got friends that can't walk with you. Some of you even got family members. That's why they don't like you. Okay, because no matter what they try to say, no matter how much dirt they try to throw on their name, on your name, the truth and the fact of the matter is that you are anointed. Okay, and you are on a level higher than them that they will never be on, and they know it. Okay. Oh, hallelujah! So now listen. Again, I'm, about, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to close. And so, and so now, if you're not hungry, let me tell you how you get hungry. Because see, you can't eat if you're not hungry. Okay? Because there are certain things that cut your appetite. You know, um, when I was in law school, praise the Lord. When I was in law school, um, I was introduced to my other brethren. 
uh, I was introduced introduced to this thing called Adderall. Yes. And Adderall is, they call it the smart pill. Um, and what it does is it gives you laser-like focus. Okay, it gives you laser. So, honey, I would pick up them doggone case books because that stuff is so boring. Ain't nothing fascinating about no law book. And, honey, I would be... Sh -sh 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 Okay, let me wash some clothes. Okay, let me wash the dishes. Okay, let me cook food. And I mean, it just gives you laser-like focus. But there's a side effect to Adderall. Adderall cuts your appetite. It makes you don't want to eat nothing. Uh, caffeine. Coffee. Coffee cuts your appetite. Okay, clearly don't cut it enough. But for me, coffee cuts your appetite. And so spiritually, some of us are ingesting things that has cut our appetites uh, so that we don't crave the word. We don't crave God's presence. We don't crave uh, 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 worship like we used to mm -hmm, because we have, we have ingested something that has cut our appetite. Well, what cuts your appetite? Sin, any form, any form of sin will cut your appetite for the things of God. The people you hang around, the, uh, the words that you speak out of your mouth, what you listen to, uh, all that kind of stuff will cut your appetite. So this is what, so how do you get your appetite back? Put your flesh on a fast. Oh, Jesus. Because see, for, you need some meat to go into this next season. For this journey that you're about to embark on, this marriage that you're about to get in, okay, this relationship, this merger that you're about to enter into, you need some meat for this journey, baby. Yes, 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 yes. You need some meat for this new career that you're getting ready to go in. The journey is too great for thee. You need some meat. and But, but you don't have a desire to pray. You don't have a desire to read the word. So you need to put your flesh on a fast so you can get hungry and eat again. Oh, Jesus. So what does fasting do? I'm almost done. Fasting invol invokes the supernatural intervention of God. Uh, it, it causes the veil between the spirit world and the natural world to come down. I, I don't know why. I don't know what it is about your flesh getting hungry, but I do know this. is when that flesh gets hungry, your spirit man does too. And instead of you eating natural food, you begin to feast on the food. Come on over here. Where the table is spread, where the feast of the Lord is going on, it causes you to want to feast on the word of God. Oh, Jesus. And that spirit man gets stronger and that fleshly man gets weaker. Hallelujah. And then you don't desire. See, 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 you don't have a desire for Halloween candy when you, when you have put your flesh on a fast and you start craving the things of God. That's why the Bible says that their God is their belly because for some candy, you are sell out on God for some candy that you can go to the store and buy any day of the year. That's so stupid to me. But anyway, whatever. And so, so, so the so so the the fasting starves your flesh and it empties you out so that you can become hungry for God again. Who needs to eat? Who needs to eat? Come on here. Who who ready to eat the meat of the word? You tired of that milk? You tired of that bread? And you ready to get this meat, this revelation, so that you can go into the strength of your journey and conquer everything that the enemy puts your way? And I'm telling you that in order for for many of you to break through into your destiny. You're going to have to eat, and you're going to have to eat some meat. Ah, uh, who ready? Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's eat. Let's eat. All right, y'all. That's all I got for you today. Let's eat. Eat this word. <laughs> Stay in his presence. Become hungry for God, because they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. My time is up. I certainly hope that this word has been a blessing to you. And if it has, shoot me an inbox message. Give me some hearts, thumbs up, share the video. I do appreciate you all for being on the Word Uncensored with Sister Shay today. Until next time, may the Lord God bless you real, real good.